PETA sucks for a couple reasons. Number one, the exploit women. Constantly using naked women in their campaigns. I don't understand how exploiting one species to try and help, you know, and the exploitation of another is productive. And I understand that women and everyone has a right to do to their body what they want. I have some friends, of course, over the years who have worked at PETA, some of the uh, women who have done these naked campaigns, and I had a friend tell me once, Gary, it's my body, and I want to use it to help the animals. I said, okay, I get that, but you are objectifying women. I had a 10-day bail hearing. I bring this up as I challenge anyone in this room, find me a 10-day bail hearing for a rapist, a murderer, or a child molester. Won't do it, but the mink liberator gets 10 days. Now, on day 10, my attorney, Steve Rogan, found out that the same exact judge, Elaine Babcock, that had been denying me bail for 10 days, had just given a man from Michigan, three weeks earlier, $1,000 bail, second degree criminal sexual conduct. Now, you know how judges can get when they don't want to hear something in their courtroom. Boy, she goes flush red, top of her voice. She goes, Steve, don't you dare bring that up in my courtroom. That's got nothing to do with this case, and you damn well know it. Now, I'm sitting over in the defendant's box. I can't talk to my attorney now. He's pacing, and I'm, but in my head, I'm going, like, don't back down, don't back down, don't back down. <laughs> so he's pacing and pacing, like, come on, Steve. And 30 seconds later, he turns and he says, you know what, Your Honor? It's got everything to do with this case. My client tried to stop cruelty. And he wants to go to jail at this point and make a statement on behalf of the animals. You gave that guy from Michigan bail for sexually assaulting a woman and you won't give my client bail? She looks at me for the first time in 10 days. And I was like, <laughs> $10,000 bail. Now agree or disagree with law breaking, and I hope you understand everybody that we all collectively admire, Dr. King, Gandhi, Rosa Parks, uh, Henry David Thoreau, Jesus, were all radical lawbreakers. Every single person on this planet that ever made substantive change was a radical lawbreaker. Even if for some reason you don't think that I should be breaking laws or that people should break laws, you can't tell me it should cost $1,000 to sexually assault a woman for bail and $10,000 to free some rats. <laughs> Bottom line on this, sexually assaulting a woman doesn't affect the economy. We just don't care about things that don't affect the root of all evil, money. How about, let's say, you were walking down an alleyway and you come across a man or a woman in a fur coat and they're being violated and raped? I would beat the rapist to death with glee and with joy for anybody who would think that I would sit there and watch because the woman in this scenario was wearing fur and was getting raped. Of course, I would stop the rape. Uh, some, some farmer far away, maybe far away in time, in the past, grows an animal and uh, the animal has uh, a wonderful life, grazing and enjoying itself. And when the time come, comes, he kills it, the animal in, in, a, in, a, in, a, you know, in a nice way, the nicest possible. This is not rape, this is not Holocaust, this is the way of life. Okay, so if I go and meet a woman at a bar, I buy her some drinks, I bring her some flowers, I take her back and put on some soft music, some Teddy Pendergrass, and we dance and we look in each other's eyes and I slip her a date rape drug and rape her. Is that humane? Why not? She didn't feel a thing. See, because the act of rape is evil, okay? The act of murder is evil. You can't do it in a nice way.